Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm a first year med student here at UCID. Uh, I've moved here in January, so I've been here for about four months now, uh, but I'm originally from Calgary in Canada. And hi, I'm Kelly Charles. I'm the uh, UN coordinator. I'm an associate professor in pharmacology, which is the study of drugs, and I have a research focus in um, cancer immunology. Brooke, why did you choose medicine? Um, so there's two main reasons I wanted to. Um, first one is I love interacting with people on a daily basis. Um, being a part of their lives and making a meaningful impact on that was really big to me. And the second thing is the science behind it. I'm fascinated by all the little minute workings and everything that's going on inside the human body as a system. So to be able to learn that is awesome. Why did you choose Sydney to come and study medicine when you could have chosen a med degree in Canada or even America? I chose Sydney partially because it didn't require an anatomy prereq, which I didn't have. Uh, but also, I love Sydney. Like, I love the city. The Sydney campus is amazing with all the old buildings and the Great Hall. And it just felt really like the right choice for me. And the program here, with the new program coming in this year, it looks like it was a really good setup to get more hands-on clinical time from even an earlier stage in the med program. Yeah, because we, we actually have this one year where you're on campus and the rest of the three years is, is now in the clinical school. So you get this additional period of time um, to be with patients and learning those clinical um, skills that you need. Yeah, that's something I can't get at a medical school in Canada that I could only get here. I was wondering if you need to have a science background to study medicine. So you don't need to have a science background, although it does really help. We do expect that all students have some level of assumed knowledge, so in cellular biology, some physiology and some introductory anatomy. And we provide an online foundation course to those students who do have a non-science background, but I would recommend highly that if you can at some opportunity within your previous degree to study those three topics, um, it'll put you in better stead. Do you not agree? Oh, I definitely agree. I have no anatomy background and it's been a little bit of a learning curve, but it's been okay. <laughs> What are your favorite things about living here? So I've lived in Sydney before. I did a working holiday visa down here two years ago. Um, and I love the city of Sydney. Uh, there's just so many things to do. I come from a landlocked place. So being able to be at the beach in 15 minutes is a fantastic op new opportunity for me. In addition to the beach, there's like beautiful harbor walks. You can be in the Royal National Park within an hour on the train. Blue Mountains are an hour away. Um, I also love um, all the different restaurants here. Even after a long day of practicals, finishing at 6 p.m., me and some of the cohort will go and have dinner. And it's just nice to have so many different options to like unwind and kind of disconnect from the med program as much as we're normally connected to it. Do you feel safe here? Yes, I feel just as safe here in Australia as I did back home in Canada. It's, it's a big, busy city. There's always people about. There's always lights on. There's always something going on. Uh, I've never had one concern for my safety in the year and a half I've lived here now. What qualities do you look for in a medical student? So we look for a few things, particularly when we're, we're holding our um, interviews at mid-year the year before. Um, we're looking for students with a high amount of knowledge that's very analytical. They want to ask lots of questions. They're very curious. We're looking for students who can display empathy so they can see beyond their own viewpoints to other people's viewpoints because that's really important when you're working with people um, as patients who may um, experience life in a different setting to the way you've grown up or the way that you currently live, that you have to treat everyone the same. We want students to have really good communication skills is another really essential aspect because um, you spend a lot of your time talking to people, um, not just you know, physically talking, but also looking for those nonverbal cues. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how do we um, try and develop good communication skills. So if you come in with, with those already, then you're at a bonus um, working through this first year. How hard was it to start the degree as a new graduate at Sydney, making friends and, and fitting in and finding your way around the campus? I was actually pleasantly surprised how easy it was to make friends and figure my way around. Um, they had quite a few events for international students prior to the course starting. Uh, they did some campus tours, so I kind of knew at least where I was going on the first day. Um, and I met some people there so that on the first day I had some people to sit with and you're not just walking in all by yourself. Um, but through the first two weeks and meeting your TBL and your clinical school group, I kind of made like a core group of friends um, and we're in communication every day, even with the isolation. So it was really easy. You meet people, there's 280 people, you're bound to find someone you click with. And, and you're with these students for at least the next 
four years, and I know from my friends who have been previously through med over the many time periods, that these become your cohort, you know, your peers mm -hmm. um, going through the rest of your med career. Um, so many of these people you'll see as consultants, if you stay here in Sydney or, or wherever, that, um, that they'll be your peers and, and friends throughout your, your career. If you get an offer for admission, can you defer and commence at a later date? You can. So uh, we have what's known as census date here at Sydney, but it's also present at most universities. And that's usually at the end of March. So you have about six weeks roughly um, to make a decision about whether you want to defer or not. Um, or even prior to entering the program, if, if at some stage something changes in your world that you want to take the year off and then come back again. Um, they do, you still have to apply for it and, and give good reasons, but um, in most situations we are generally very supportive and we hold your place um, again for the following year and look forward to seeing you and then. What's your timetable like? How are you coping? <laughs> My timetable has changed a lot since we moved online. Yep. Um, but when we were in class, it was it looked very daunting when you look at it on a calendar. Some days you're going from 8.30 in the morning to 6 at night. But it really was manageable the way it was all laid out. Um, so your week kind of starts on Tuesday with your at-home learning. And you learn all the basics of your topic for that week. And then I would go to clinical school. And on Wednesdays, we'd learn the history taking and the actual physical exam of that topic for that week. And then Thursday, Friday, with the practicals and the lectures, we'd dive deeper into that topic. Um, and then Mondays, they would all come together in the TBL, where you'd work through a whole case study with your group. Um, and it would just really like, you realize by Monday how much you've learned in such a short time when you're going through it all in the TBLs. Um, when do clinical placements commence and what's involved? So clinical placements start on week two of first year. Um, so we try and get you guys into the clinical school from you know, as quickly as we can, uh, because we think that's really important that you start having some exposure and also application of what you're learning um, into real patients. So when did you actually get to meet your first patient? Uh, week two, just week two. as you said, um, our history tutor, we went through the basic outline, the basic structure, and then he's like, well, you're not going to learn anything more here. So we went to the wards and he found us a patient and we all uh, kind of took turns doing different parts of the history. It was a little nerve wracking for sure, being there on the second week, but by within a few weeks, you're getting pretty comfortable. It's important to remember that they're just people too, and as long as you treat them with respect and practice getting the information that you need to get, it's not too scary. Yeah. So it's, really, it's a really important part of our process here at Sydney is to make sure you guys get um, as much clinical time as possible. And just with the clinical pl placements, um, can you just elaborate on what exactly is involved with those? Okay. so. In the first year, our, our job is really to start you on your journey of, of how to become a clinician. So there are sessions on how to do clinical examinations. So the physical symptoms, you know, looking at hands and wrists and you know, taking respiratory signs and whatever else. And then also taking history. So learning how to do a very structured history taking so you don't miss anything. Um, and then there's also communication skills sessions. So working through those processes of how do I communicate? How am I looking for those verbal, nonverbal cues? Um, also thinking about how to deal with, um, as we sort of develop through this year, how to deal with bad news, how to deal with difficult situations, how to deal with feedback. What happens when that person is unhappy with, with what advice you give? What, how do you cope with that? There is a lot of... Um, care in the way that we've worked through the program to develop the skills that you need um, to be a really good empathetic and caring doctor. Do you work part-time? Um, so up until the start of the COVID I was working part-time uh, as a bartender and I was really enjoying it. It was nice to kind of have that eight hour break away from med where I could just kind of completely put it out of my mind and make a little bit of money at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest thing I would say is just to make sure it fits in your schedule. So I would sit down and schedule my work in first and then schedule my study time around that. Um, but it's definitely important that you schedule it in. Um, I would recommend only working Saturdays and Sundays just so you don't have to try and work around your class schedule. I don't think I was behind at any point. It was also a nice opportunity for socializing. Um, you work with your coworkers, most of them you're friendly with, you kind of chat and hang out for a few hours and yep. yeah, it was great.
what is the average class size and what proportion of students are international in the Sydney MD program? So the proportion of internationals does change from year to year, but we try to have roughly about a 20% uh, cohort. And I think that makes for a good group dynamic, particularly within that, that international cohort. You've got a you know, group of students that are all in very similar situations. The diversity of that cohort does change. So we do have quite a lot of Canadians. So you must admit there's the biggest group is the Canadians. Definitely. Um, but we do have, you know, from about 10 different other countries throughout Asia and the Middle East and, and various places throughout Europe. Um, so it does add to the diversity of the group. Um, in terms of class sizes, it varies. It depends on the type of activity and how much um, interaction you need with the staff. So, for example, your clinical school day, you have, you know, five or six, is that right? Yep. A group. Mm -hmm. with one tutor and they take you on bedside tutorials and you go and do the patient interaction very one-on-one -on -one type of training which is what you need at that level things like your anatomy practice or your microscope practice like pathology and histology you can work together in pairs or by yourself but in a much larger cohort so up to about a hundred people in a room roughly but with lots of demonstrators and then of course we've got our big large-scale forums which are the lecture equivalents um, they go for 90 minutes and they're the whole cohort, so all 280 students at once in one big lecture theatre. Did you find it easy to reach out to us academics? Have we um, been approachable? <laughs> I actually found yes. So my past, the past university I attended, I would have to wait sometimes days for a reply, um, but I've been very pleasantly surprised with Sydney and how quickly people have gotten back. Um, I emailed one of the population health lectures at like midnight asking just a random question about one of the papers he had um, presented and he replied back to me within five minutes. It was after midnight. It was crazy. Um, and you all have replied to me really quickly. Um, like after yep. my CAT exam, I think you replied back to me within 30 seconds. Which was great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've had no issues reaching out or getting answers from anybody when I needed them. So do you have a study group, Brooke? Don't have a typical study group where we meet up and go through topics. Um, but since we've moved online, we have uh, a big group chat with about 15 of us in it. And if you're going through a topic or anything that you're kind of struggling with, somebody will just shoot it up there and everybody can kind of chime in. And we're usually working on the same things at similar times because even though it's online, we're still kind of following the suggested schedule. Um, so that kind of helps if we're all working on something, say we're doing an anatomy bracket, you just can't find this one muscle, somebody somewhere within that group chat will have found it and be able to help you out. What opportunities do I have to complete international placements back in my home country of Canada? So we've developed a really strong program of international placements and about two thirds of all of the cohorts. So more than just the international students will have an international experience, uh, clinical experience in their program. Most students will take the elective um, block in the fourth year somewhere internationally and it's about 60 odd countries that there's a choice of but most of our international students will return back to their home country so they can get a foot in the door there um, and so particularly for the Canadian students there's the Pacific Bridge program that's been running for quite a number of years that really puts students in touch with the right specialty blocks that they want to go and attend um, for future careers and they also have an opportunity in the selective which is right at the end of fourth year um, so after the full pre-intern year of year four, so where you're embedded into all of the, the teams and blocks, um, many students will head back home at that point to embed themselves as a pre-intern into their new um, hospitals so that it gives them that opportunity to um, connect between what was postgraduate medicine and their intern year. The other thing I, uh, we haven't talked about really is rural placement. So for Canada, you've got a rural um, difference in, in hospitals and difference in primary care. And um, so for you, the opportunity is also available if you want to also do a rural placement here in Australia, which may be useful if you ever want to go back into a rural setting in Canada. Um, so in our third year, we have um, an opportunity for any student um, to apply to go to Dubbo, Lismore, Broken Hill, which are our, and Orange, um, which are our four sites in Western and Northern New South Wales, and to be experiencing um, medicine in a really different way. So um, the presentation of disease and the population, the people are really very different than city people. Um, as someone myself, I come from the country, 
like you, um, I would say I'm, I'm not naturally a city person. I'm, I'm very much a country person living in the city. And, um, and I think that experience of, of seeing rural medicine and the challenges and the opportunities that, um, that present out there, it's also a much smaller cohort. It's a really close knit cohort um, and they can stay for a whole year. So they do their whole um, third year out there um, doing all of their specialty blocks, but there's also an opportunity in fourth year to embed it, be embedded into a, a rural placement as well. So that's something that if you've not thought about yet, then um, I can definitely recommend um, seeing another little part of Australia. Great. Another question I had for you was what advice do you have for a medical student to get through their degree? When it comes to medicine, we've got a really short period of time to try and teach you everything. So it's a really um, fast paced, high content load type of degree. So scheduling is so, so important. I think the other advice is to have, um, you know, as you've done, found a really good support network. Um, so, you know, you've mentioned you've had a partner here, you've got friends outside, you've got work and different social circles that allow you that time, that breathing space to kind of allow you to consolidate some of the thoughts that you have about medicine, but also just to give yourself a break. Here at Sydney, there are lots of sporting opportunities. There's all sorts of arts, creative clubs as well. There's a lot of different opportunities around Sydney, particularly because we're right in the middle of the city, um, to go and join new classes. So I, I drum. That's my personal hobby that I do outside of uni. But it gives me a different group of people that after a really hard day of work or whatever, I can go and um, bang a drum really hard and um, let off some tension <laughs> and a bit of steam. Um, but I think that's really important. Um, I guess the other thing is to remember that you're not in this by yourself. You've got a whole cohort of almost 300 students who are going through the same thing. Um, and so to reach out to them to say, hey, I'm finding this week really tough or um, I found, you know, I had this patient that was really difficult. I don't know how I would have dealt with it differently. Someone else will be able to help, um, you know, kind of walk you through alternatives or how to tackle something differently. And I think that's a really big bonus of um, how, how well and, and well knit this whole cohort works together. For sure, and I'd agree with all of that as well. <laughs> Is there anything that you would recommend or you know, some sort of advice to other students who are thinking about coming here and, and why they should come to Sydney? I would say scheduling is huge to get through the program, but also just cutting yourself some slack. If there's one day where you just need to have a sleep in and just not do anything that day, that's okay too. Um, you will make it up, you will catch up. We're all gonna get through it. Remember there's 279 other students in the cohort with you. They're all going through the same thing. You can reach out, use them as a support system. But as you mentioned, have that outside support system where you can just completely disconnect from med and people wouldn't know what you were talking about if you brought it up anyway. I guess the other thing is that we've got also that we've brought in this year that's new is programmatic assessment. So, you know, there's no pass fail assessments anymore. Um, they're all, um, all assessments count um, and that we have a portfolio of assessments that can show or demonstrate your skills as they, de as they sort of develop um, through your assessments throughout the year. And that if some things aren't up to the standard that we're expecting you at, we provide a level of remediation and give you advice and support to make sure that you can reach that standard um, prior to the end of the year so that you can progress to the next year. Um, we don't want to leave any students behind. Um, we really want to make sure that everyone is at a standard that's needed, particularly moving from first year into clinical year in year two. Um, so we're going to be trying really hard to um, make sure all those students that perhaps um, don't meet our standards of either the knowledge or the clinical skills have the opportunity to, to have another go at it um, and keep going until they can progress through. Yeah. And that's really nice when you're studying for an exam. If you per se didn't do as well, you have a chance to revamp your study technique as opposed to just failing the exam. Yeah. You know, we really want to make sure that we're supportive of the cohort and the students so that they're not as stressed going through all this whole program, which is really big.